Hello, in this video, I'm showing you how you can cap off your central heating loft tank so you can do some work on your system without having to drain it down. Now, this is incredibly useful if you need to do a little bit of work on your system, like change a radiator valve that suddenly started leaking. And then you can do that without having to drain the whole system down. Now, I'm going to show you three jobs where I use this method and I'm going to show you some important things which you need to do so you don't end up with water pouring out whilst you're trying to do the job. Also, an important note regarding some of the loft tank connections. Make sure you watch the video to the end because I'll explain the importance of taking these plugs back out again in the right order so you don't end up with any air in your system. Right, now let's quickly wish for my intro and I'll show you how to cap off this loft tank. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here we go then. I'm going to quickly show you three different jobs where I've used this method of plugging up the loft tanks. Then I'll show you how to do that before you go back plugging off the loft tank yourself. Now the first job was on this pump here. Although I closed down both the valves really tight, when I come to remove the pump, there was still lots of water coming out of one of the valves and I couldn't remove the pump. I couldn't catch the water fast enough in a bowl and I couldn't use my water vacuum because there was just too much water coming out. So then I'd have two options. One would be to drain the whole system and I don't want to do that because that's going to take loads of time and it's going to drag the job out and that's not what I want to do. And of course the second option is to plug off the loft tank which is what I'm going to do in a minute and I'll show you how to do that in detail. Because there are some important things which you need to know when you come to do this job. And if you want to watch my video on how to change this pump then I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the second job I was going to show you was on these pump valves. You can see how the pump valves have been leaking and are dripping all over the boiler and rusting the boiler. And if this is not stopped, the boiler would then have to be condemned. Now again, I didn't want to drain the whole system down because this is a really big system and it would take hours and hours to drain this whole system and then refill it. So again, I plugged the small loft tank and that worked perfectly. And then finally, the third job is this really common job of replacing a leaking radiator valve. Now, this is a thermostatic valve which is leaking. You can see the top bit there is all crusty or that bit there is broken. And if I push the pin up and down, you can see your water starts dripping out straight away. And again, this is a really big system and I don't want to go draining the entire system down just to change this one valve. This saves the customer loads of money and it saves me loads of time so I can then get on with my next job. Now I'm sure there are plenty of engineers who would tell you to drain the whole system down and of course there may be really good reasons for doing that but with these three jobs for me it was not necessary. And if you do want to know how to remove a radiator valve and replace it without draining your system then of course you can watch my video and I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the first thing to point out is that these tanks aren't always in the loft. Obviously these two tanks are. This is the large cold water storage for the hot water and then this is the F and E tank that stands for feed and expansion. So this tank feeds the central heating and it takes up the expansion of the water in the central heating. So this little tank is the one that we're looking for. Now here's another large cold water storage tank. This one is made of asbestos. And then up here in the eaves is the little feed and expansion tank. Now I wanted to point this one out to you because this one doesn't have an open vent pipe. So it doesn't have that 22 mil pipe coming up and over the top and into the top of the tank. Now this is perfectly acceptable in the right circumstances and any engineers who may be thinking that isn't correct, you're not allowed to do that, then just look it up in the building regulations. You must have a 22 mil feed pipe and the boiler must have an overheat thermostat. But the most concerning part for me is this tank has got hardly any insulation. So there is a possibility of freezing in the winter and that would be dangerous for the system. Now I must point out you're most likely going to be going into the loft and lofts can be extremely hazardous. You cannot walk on the insulation and if you do you are likely to go straight through your ceiling into your bedrooms. 
You can only step on a joist and quite often these days they are all covered up with insulation. If there are boards laid down, sometimes they can be loose, so do be really careful. Now I'm going to show you how to bung up this tank. This was a tank where I replaced the central heating pump valves. Just here is the mains water cold supply pipe to keep your central heating topped up. And that goes into the float valve. And then down in the bottom there, there is the cold water feed pipe, which feeds the central heating. Now here's the two rubber bungs, which I normally use. And plus there's a 22 mil speed fit cap. Now, if you are going to get yourself a bung, then try and get one where the taper is a continuous taper rather than the one which is there, which has got a step in it. The continuous taper without the step in it just fit that little bit better. So this is the feed pipe and I want to bung that one up to stop any water from going into the central heating system. So here's my bung. I'm going to push it into the hole there and then give it a little twist and make sure that it's not going to come out. Push that in there nice and tight. Now this feed connection in this tank is a little different to some of the other ones I see. You can see it's got threads sticking out into the tank. They're usually flat up against the tank, like this one here. Another little important note, I've just drawn a picture of it here. So this is a loft tank connector and sometimes they have these little lugs that stick out into the pipe. So when you put your bung in, so the brown bit there is the bung, you get a gap all the way around the outside. That red there is, is the gap. And it's not going to seal off the tank and you're going to get water continuously dribbling out whilst you're trying to do the job. Before you bung it off, you might want to just put your finger inside the hole and just make sure that it is a round hole and there's no little lugs sticking out into the pipe. If you do find you have this type of connector, then all you can do is to use a rag or maybe a hard bit of sponge and put that in the hole instead. Now here's a 22 mil tank connector. You can see you've got the two lugs on the outside of this one and then the bung will just go in there and block up that hole nice and easily. So no water's gonna be running past whilst you're trying to do the job. Now I just need to cap off or bung up the open vent pipe. Now if we leave this pipe open, you will get air rushing straight down that pipe and then you get water pouring out whilst you're doing the job. So we definitely need to plug this up like that. So I'm just gonna put my plug or bung up inside the pipe there. Now do be really careful because these can be really sharp. And if it's been cut with a pipe slice, you're gonna tear your bung to pieces. So just be really careful when you're doing that, you're not damaging bung. The other way to do it is with a push fit cap. And I'll just show you how to do that in just a sec. There we go, so that pipe is now bunged up and you can see that's the open vent pipe. It comes down there and vanishes behind all the stuff in the loft there. Now here I have a different open vent pipe, which I'm gonna cap off. You just want to make sure it's clean. Just make sure you haven't got it, uh, lots of bits of dirt on there. So we get a good seal. Then I'm going to take my push fit cap. So this is a 22 mil speed fit cap. And I'm just going to push it onto the bottom of the pipe there like that. I'm just going to make it wet as well. So it slips on there easily. You could put some Vaseline on it. So it goes on there nice and easily. I just said, if you have an older house, then you might have old Imperial pipe work, which would be three quarters. And it's very slightly smaller than a 22. And if you use a push fit cap, it might be a tiny bit loose. So a bung might be better in that instance. Now here's my F&E tank capped off or bunged up. So I'm now ready to go and do the job. Now, whenever I do a job like this, I always try and make sure I don't get something called back circulation. That's where air gets drawn in one side of the pipe and then water starts glugging out to the other side of the pipe. Now to do this on the radiator, all we need to do is just to turn the radiator valve off at the other end of the radiator. You might want to count the number of turns it takes to turn it off so that when you turn it back on, you turn it back the same number so it's in the same position. Now I've got my thermostatic valve turned off and you may not realize that when I come to do this, I still need to drain off a fair bit of water uh, because there's still pressure in the system and then the vacuum will steadily build up and then the water would then stop coming out and I can remove the valve. So you will need to catch that water. Now you can use a water vacuum like I'm using here, or you could just catch that water in a bowl. Once the vacuum or the hydraulic lock starts building up, the water will slow down and then you'll be able to remove the valve or whatever component you're trying to remove without that water coming out. Now I've speeded this clip up so you can see what's going on. You can see the water is slowing down now and it won't take long till the water has stopped coming out 
we've created that airlock and then we can remove the valve. If you do want to know how to replace a radiator valve in detail, then I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch my other video on how to do that. Now, if you're planning to use this method when working on 22 mil pipes, be aware even with the airlock created, you may still get water running out of that pipe. So be prepared for that, be quick with the job and then get it done as quick as you can and catch any spilled water and make sure it doesn't go over any electrics. So you can see on here now I have two new pump valves and this old floor standing boiler will last just that little bit longer. After we finish doing the work, we then need to remove the bungs. Now it's really important that we remove them in the correct order. So we wanna remove the bung that is in the feed pipe first of all. We don't want to remove the open vent because if we remove the open vent, we then get air being sucked in the system and we don't wanna get any air in because that might give us some additional circulation problems which we then need to sort out. So I'm gonna remove this bung here and then what's going to happen is the water will then go into the system and then we'll see the float valve will drop like it is there and then the system's going to start filling back up again. Now depending what work you've done and how much water you've drained off it will depend on how long the float valve is going to run for. Now on this particular job a fair bit of water did come out so I'm expecting the float valve to run for a little while. You can see now that the float valve is running quite fast. Now we do not want to remove that open vent pipe bung or cap until the water has stopped going into the tank. So we've just got to wait till that float valve has finished filling up and then we'll be able to remove it. If you've replaced the radiator, now is the best time to go and bleed that radiator whilst you've still got that bung in the tank. And if you do want to know how to replace a radiator without draining the system, of course you can watch my video and it's in the description below. So there we go, we can see the float valve has now virtually stopped flowing, it's just topping up the tank, it's just a little bit of water coming out, but now I can remove this bung, or cap, and I can be satisfied that no air would have been sucked into the system. So that's it, that's how you go about bunging off or capping off your loft tank whilst you do some work on the system. Now you will just need to go around and just check your radiators, make sure there is no air in them, but you can see by following this method, you'll then get the least amount of air getting into your system. So hopefully now your system is back up and running again. One last thing, now this is a loft tank where I drain the system for a different job. You can see the tank is uh, nearly empty of water, but in the bottom of this tank, you can see it is full of horrible brown gunge. And you don't want any of that stuff getting into your system because it may give you problems blocking things up. So with the feed plugged off, you could then drain this tank like this. You can literally just take out all the water and then get rid of all that gunge which is in the bottom. You will need to turn off your float valve for to do this you may need to tie the float valve up or turn the mains water off to do this but you can see you don't really want to get any of that into your system and there's no easy way of doing it you've literally just got to keep on scooping it out and then get a sponge you can wipe around the sides clean it all up and then this way when you remove that plug from the feed pipe none of this gunky stuff in the bottom of the tank is going to get into your system which again may cause you problems you can see now i've cleaned this tank out it's nice and clean and the fresh clean water is now going into the system. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.